It's the Bully Spin Podcast. And we just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. I'm getting money. I'm getting money. Nah, for real. 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 All right. Today we got the Bully Spitting Podcast jumping off the porch with us today. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Fresh off the flight. Just Fresh turned down. Yes, I sir. see. I see how y'all yeah. feeling, man. Man. I feel good. Yeah. For sure. I feel good, man. We loving it. Happy to be here at uh, off the porch for nah, sure. For sure. Appreciate that, bro. For, for sure. sure. Yeah, it's a pleasure yeah. to have y'all on the porch with us today, man. Yeah, we done seen we we stay tuned with the interviews, man, and you know we finally here. Now it's time to y'all to kick y'all game. For, for sure. sure. So go ahead and let the world know who y'all are. For sure. For sure. Shoot. Well it's been podcast, you know, we we two of uh four members. Shoot, man, uh Started with a uh, Stevie Dre vision, and uh, shoot, we like we all just came together different ways. Um, I think I met I met Stevie through two other you know our two other members that we know that couldn't make it. Shout out to Tony, shout out to Low Key, uh, and then shoot you know since then we just been taking off with it. You know, uh, we do a podcast every Wednesday, eight to ten. You can catch us on YouTube at uh, the Bully Spin Podcast, and uh, we just been taking off with it. It's never, it's never before been done in the dog game, and the dog game is uh, is growing uh, to so big that now you got a, uh, and it, it, it's it's almost one of the biggest markets that's not that's one of the biggest industries that's not televised. Yeah, yeah. So that's shit, real. for sure. So how did you guys discover y'all love for dogs and decide to bring them together? First of all, yeah. let's tell the people where y'all from. For sure, I'm from I'm from Dallas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm from a small country town called Corsica County, Texas, man. East Texas. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I reside in the city. They Dallas don't say you look like Chad Butler. Chad Butler, Chad Butler. Oh, Pimp C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I <laughs> sure. get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time for sure. No, nah, yeah. for sure. Nah, for real. <laughs> so where did y'all two meet at? Man, so uh, how we met, uh, I met Allen through Tony. Through Tony, uh, I met Tony through just, you know, shooting videos. Somebody booked him for, uh, to use his dials in a video. I'm thinking we going to a studio. We pull up to the man's house. I'm like, okay, bet. So uh, I see a dog I ain't never seen before. It's a pit but it's small and it's, it's stocky. So I'm like, what kind of dog is this? You know, I ain't asked no questions though. I just left it alone. And then uh, ended up getting invited to another show. And that's how I got in the game. But yeah, so that's how I met him through Tony. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, when we first started, we was having a, we had this little spot, this little daiquiri spot. We was doing outdoor uh, podcasts and uh, and I think it was Tony, Low Key, and Stevie, and uh, they was, you know, they were doing their podcast, and I was just, I was just pulling up to support. And uh, one time they was like, you know, well, shoot, the first time they was like, man, get on here. So I, shit, I got on the podcast with them, and then the next time, you know, they like, shit, we want you to be a part of the, of the team. Uh, at this time, I was, uh, I had a, a, a dog that was that was real hot in the game, uh, named Soji. And uh, so I was kind of reluctant at first to kind of take away from that. But then once I seen that everybody was kind of full-fledged with it, so we went head first. Yeah. That's so, real. Yeah. So how did y'all discover y'all passion for dogs alone? So I've been, uh, I've had dogs my whole life, uh, from pits to Rottweilers and uh, Chows, all type of dogs. But uh, when, when uh, you know these 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 exotics, these these bullies, these exotic bullies, they uh, they expensive. So it took me a while. You know, I had to get grown before I could really get one. So I think like in uh, 2015, 2015, I bought my first one, and then shit, I've been in the game since. Man, the crazy thing is, I ain't even a dog, man. I just you know I got in the game by. Uh, just vid being a videographer, uh, I seen a lane that was that was good energy. You know, at this time uh, down in Fort Worth, you know Dallas Fort Worth, it's, it's the, the youngsters was doing a lot of 
like killing and this this records. And uh, I didn't want to be involved in it, so I found this lane, you know what I'm saying, going to a show. Once I went to the show, I was like, man, I can do something over here. And that's how I got in it. That's real. Yeah. So talk about how lucrative the Frenchie game is because we see everybody, you know what I'm saying, trying to get one or everybody trying to sell one. So For sure. how did y'all discover like that lane yeah. was a very lucrative business lane? So you got you got different uh bull breeds. You got you got Frenchies, you got bulldogs, you got uh, exotic bullies, American bullies. My man back here can tell you about the, the them fluffy Frenchies, man. He got a fluffy Frenchie right here. Um, I think his his litter mate. Tell him what you just did with his litter mate. Yeah, we just sold a litter mate twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand for 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 the litter. For litter mate and sister. Well down. Yeah. One yeah. one puppy. One puppy. Yeah. Not not the litter. One puppy. A puppy. Twenty five yeah. racks. Twenty five thousand. They get they they get higher than that. And it can go higher. It just. It's fifty right here. Fifty racks for that dog right there. Yeah. So it, it's like uh. That's 50, it's exotic. That's fifty it's, real thousand. It's exotic. It's like it's like it's za, you know. Yeah, it's it's just, so it's, it's it's a it's a dog, but just like you got, you know, you got your red, you got your za, you got your, your you got your za, <laughs> you got your OG, you got your za. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nah, for sure. So what about Frenchies make them so expensive? Uh, so it depends on. So with the Frenchies, it's a little bit different. So with the Frenchies, they they heavy into the DNA, um, and there's DNA combinations that people don't have yet. So the rarer the combination, you know, that's the rarer the dog you can create. So people are are, are really chasing that that rare combination uh, of uh, of different genes that you know, so they can they can have that dog that nobody has, basically. So it's a uh, like a fluffy Frenchie. Yeah, well, well, you got you got different type of fluffies. You got different type of like you got you got the he could t it's different calibers, different different calibers and all. Like there's a lot of fluffies out there, but they're not all like fifty thousand dollars or twenty thousand yeah. dollars and stuff like that. Like it goes with DNA, genetic structure, yeah. color, all of that plays part two also. Some of them you can get for you know maybe two three thousand. Yeah, uh, you you can it's just it just all depends on the on the on the on the DNA like you said the DNA the structure the bloodline it comes from and uh, you know the, basically the 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 lineage behind it. Yeah, that's real for sure. Being that the kennel game is going so crazy right now. Yeah, talk about the genius idea to come up with a podcast. So, like you said, when we when we we sit, we sit here and we talk uh, all the time, we have meetings, and we talk about how this game is a uh, how this game is, is not televised, but it's so big of an industry. You know, what I'm saying we have we got all type of you know celebrities and you know actors, rappers, athletes um, in the game, but for whatever reason, this game hasn't made it mainstream yet. So. You know, that's kind of was our goal when we got to when we sat together and, you know, we have a podcast is to kind of bring that light to the to, to the forefront. Mm. Everybody knows now, you know, and, and, and over the years, it's gotten better. Everybody knows now uh, they may not know about the game, but they, mm. they see a certain type of dog. They say that dog costs a lot of money. That's the first thing they say. They say it's an expensive ass dog. Ain't it? Um, but it's a. Uh, our goal is just to bring it to the forefront, bring it, you know, get this industry televised and, and really uh, let people know what's going on. That's real. Yeah. So, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> My bad, because I want to make sure I'm staying on track. Shit, I don't even remember. Oh, damn. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> no, I'm bullshit. Okay. I said, what made you guys come together and capitalize off the idea of that, the, that this brand and this mm -hmm. uh, industry is not televised. Right. Yeah. So, what made you guys come together and come up with the idea to start a podcast? Right. So, uh, well, we 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 started uh we started blogging at first. We was blogging, and uh, I kind of you know I got the style. Uh, I used to work under my partner, uh, Real Tune TV. 
uh, I was I was shadowing him and a, a cat named Bob Supreme out of Fort Worth. We were shooting a documentary anyway. You know, he's a blogger, so I was like, ain't nobody doing that over here. Let me blog about these dogs, and and it turned out the it turned out to work. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, the podcast came about, man. We didn't see no we didn't see nobody doing it. It needed to be done. Uh, and man, it's it's been taken off. You know, you know the rest of us, uh, besides, like Stevie, he's he's a uh, you know the videographer. Right. You know, the rest of us, we had dogs anyway. Yeah. So, we, you know, we breeding dogs and, uh, you know, other things that we're doing, you know, in our own personal lives, too. And it's just like, should we bring the dogs? It's only going to help. It's only going to bring, you know, it's only going to help our industry, you know, to, uh, you know, do this podcast and kind of bring this industry mainstream. Um, and, and now it's, 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 it's bigger than it's ever been. And it's getting it's getting even bigger. No, that's real. Talk about some of the work that goes into breeding. Man. <laughs> I know a lot of people just probably assume yeah. they can just buy a dog, buy two dogs and just start, but I know nah. it's a lot of work that goes into it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of risk. It's a lot of risk too. Uh, you know, some people would think you can get in and you just gonna, you're guaranteed to make money and no, nah, it don't work like that. Like, you know, I done had some years where I done, I done ran it up. And then to like, I done had some years where, or a year now, where it just, nothing can go right. So uh, it's an investment for sure, but just like any investment, it's a risk involved. You gotta really love, you gotta really like and love which, you know, these dogs to really kinda, to stay around for real, because it's gonna come a time to where, you know, these dogs so expensive, it's gonna really put you to the test uh, if you still want to do this. Yeah, cause like uh, I think I, I think people that's getting in it, they see they see the glamour, but they don't see what go on. You know how you gotta stay feeding these dogs. You gotta spend time with them. You gotta you, you gotta clean up out them. It, you For know sure. some people got about ten dollars at a time, so you, you really cutting out your yo yo time to do what you want to do. You know to cater to these dogs. And you really got to have a passion for it, you know what I'm saying? If, if you got the passion, the money going to come. But if you're just coming in for the money, you might, you might not win. Yeah. It's you gonna, might not win. It's going gonna, it's gonna, like, it's, it's to put you to the test because it's going to be a time where some don't. It's, it happened to everybody. Some don't go right. And it's going to be an expensive something that don't go right. And yeah. it's going to be you still want to do this after that? Or do you, uh, you want to throw in a towel cut your losses? So. I mean, vet bills. Dog food bills, do, you know, dog food, vet bills, cleaning up dogs. Uh, like now we, we out here in Atlanta, you got to pay somebody to, to, to take care of your dogs back home. Yeah. Uh, watch it. It's, it's, uh, you got you, some dog, you, you might lose a dog, you know. You can lose a dog, you know, from illnesses, sicknesses. Sometimes it's negligent. Sometimes it's the heat. Um, sometimes you buy a bad investment. You buy a dog that's not the dog you should have bought. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of different. It's, it's not all glitz and glamour, but uh, you know, um, if you really, if it's something you want to do, you can do it and be successful at it. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Tell us the difference between a 1K Frenchie and a 3K Frenchie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm about to say that, man. Uh, it's just like cars, man. It's, 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 if you want something cheap, you get you something cheap. If you want you a, a Hellcat, get you a Hellcat. Like I know people that have spent fifty thousand on a dog, and they don't even get the dog. Like I know people that have spent a thousand dollars on a dog. I don't expect a thousand dollars to make you no fifty thousand on a dog. Nah, for real. You don't go like that. I mean, that's them pet, them pet home prices right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You looking for a dog to have at the house every day. Pet home. For yeah. sure. Every dog is not meant to be bred. So, yeah. right. you know, so some of them thousand dollar Frenchies that you may be, or bullies you may be talking about, that may just be a dog that some, somebody wants just as a pet at the house. Yeah. You know, it ain't meant to be bred. You don't want to pass on its genes like that. But, uh, yeah. So, 
that's that's the difference. Uh, pretty much, the, uh, the you got the structure, the DNA, the quality. Uh, it's it's all involved. Man, you can really compare these guys to like some mad scientists, for real, because like they really looking at these DNAs and putting them together and. It might not get it on this breeding, but the next breeding, you can take this one and put that one with it. You know, it's a lot that go into it. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? That's a good knowledge of food. Yeah. Breeders are like scientists. Yeah. They really know how to look at this dog and tell what's going to come from it and what it's going to look like down the line. It might not be in the pot right now. It might gonna look like a totally different dog in three or four months. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of scientific knowledge going into it. These breeders out here, this is a serious game, and they really be taking it real serious. Nah, that's and, right. and these not overnight, this not overnight thing. It might be a one to three year thing, you feel For me? For sure. Yeah. Like I, I shoot, I, like I said, I started this game, and this game in 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. And uh, it really hit for me in 2020. But that was like, you know, four or five years of, you know, just grinding and working and not really seeing, I'm seeing results in my program, but I'm not really seeing the results as far as uh, the bread, the money. Uh, so it, it, some people can come in and it, it happened overnight for them, but for the most part, it's, it's a little bit of a grind. You're going you're gonna to put some work in. You're going you're gonna to make some, uh, some investments and, and some sacrifices. For sure. If they don't see you grinding, like uh, you might go get a fifty thousand dollar dog and, and jump in the game, but you got those OGs out there that, that that's been in the game five, ten years, don't give a damn about your fifty thousand dollar dog. Yeah. Because she they didn't put in that work and, and then took those losses and crawled back to understand, you know what I'm saying? Yo, just because you got a, a nice motor, I know how to tune that motherfucker up, you know what I'm saying? So it, it takes a lot, you know what I'm saying, with those dogs outside of just buying an expensive dog to know how to how to move your program, you know what I'm saying? Because one thing I learned from the dog game is you, once that program respected, you know what I'm saying, it's a whole nother level that you can reach with it, you know what I'm saying? Outside, you just spend a lot of money on the dog. That's a fact. That's a no, fact. That's a real fact. Talk about some of the hate you guys received just because you were bringing some of the negligence of the industry to light on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I, I, our page gone right now. <laughs> off some hater shit. <laughs> For real. <laughs> off some, off some hater shit. You know, we had to, we, we trying to get our main page back, Instagram page back, just off some hater shit, man. Uh, this game before, before, uh, you know, previously, like, you, you know, before we came around and, and just having a podcast is just pure, raw, cutthroat, telling it like it is, keeping it 100, you would have people that would kind of hide information or, or kind of uh, not want, you know, basically not want to tell you everything or, you know, sugarcoat this, sugarcoat that. And uh, they got away with it for so long but then you have an outlet like like us that come out, and now you got people who can who can talk about bad business that people doing, bad breedings that people doing. You know, uh, somebody selling this person a a fifty thousand dollar dog that's gone in two weeks. Like dead in two weeks. Yeah, dead in two weeks, or you know, something like that. That happens. Yeah, yeah it happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it's like yeah, yeah, shit. It's just like yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy because it's like, at one time it wasn't nothing you can do about it. Uh, you can go to small claims court or whatever, but you gonna spend more money than, you know what I'm saying? So it's really like, so what, what do I do next? So now that we got the platform, you know, now you can, you can, you can put them on a blacklist. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you can do business if you want to with them, that's cool, but this is what they did to me, so just watch out, you feel me? So you, you, right now you kind of want to keep 
keep a clean uh record, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we so we get hate from that. We, we, get, we didn't lost partners. Yeah. We didn't lost partners behind this. Uh you know, we a lot of people we done treated with respect and they done crossed us. So we get a lot of hate. Sometimes, yes. yeah. As as people, as humans, we be wanting to, you know, respond, but as a you know, as an entity, as a uh, as a brand, you can't really respond to everything. You feel me? So, and that's some of the growing pains that we all went through. Like, cause shit, it have been everybody that's on the pod, that's a member of the podcast, all four of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, at one point, somebody done said something or or did something, and and, and we ain't think about the brand, mm-hmm. and we just, you know, real quick reaction, and and, and it ended up biting us, you know. Yeah. But you learn though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You learn as time go on, like that you just can't respond to everything. So we got, yeah, we get a lot of, we got a lot of hate. We get a lot of love too though. Yeah, we get a lot of love. We get a lot of love too though. So, so you know, it, it it, it's out. people that appreciate uh, what we do and yeah, what we bring to the game. Guys back here, man, you know, uh, we building, we building the bond, man. You know, uh, they actually throw a dope ass show. Uh, if y'all want to speak on that, you know what I'm saying? We do uh, the Boosie Badass Dog Show. But Boosie now, he's, uh, everybody that knows Boosie knows he's big and he loves dogs. So now he, um, we do a tour. We're doing four, four shows a year. But we're going around and um, the, the, it's called the Boosie Badass Dog, Celebrity Dog Show. And uh, we, just, we just did Texas uh, last month, man. It was a, a great turnout. The first crazy. We did was in Columbia, South Carolina, but Texas. Really came out and showed a lot of love, um, and like he said, man, uh, and I can speak on Bullet Podcast, man. It's something that's needed. You know what I'm saying? With me doing, coming from the music side of things, uh, I, I understand what they're doing, and I understand that that the world needs to be televised on exactly what's going on with these dogs. Um, and like they said, man, they they some genuine guys. You can tell. You know what I'm saying? Where their vision going? You know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate them. You know what I'm saying, for having us and um, and like you said, we, we got another one coming up November 18th in Las Vegas um, at Boosie's new club, New World Event Center, Badass Dog Show. So, his, yeah, his stack off, he got a song called Badass Stack Off where, where he come out and judge, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the best stack off dog and it's, and it's getting some good uh, response, you know what I'm saying, from the dog community. Um, sure. He come out, he show them that I'm not just in here, just popping up, popping out, he's there, he's walking around, he's looking. Like we maybe then purchased five, six dogs just from the first dog show. You know what I'm saying? We got everything in the house from Tibetans to Cane Corso, Prince Canary. So there's a lot of more different breed of dogs outside of the, the bullies, the EBs and the Frenchies um, that we, we, we into as well. So um, we, uh, we definitely building with, with these guys, man. And, and we got some stuff coming up our sleeve that's going to really switch the whole culture up with the hip hop and the dogs coming up. No, that's real. Okay. How would y'all describe the experience at some of these dog shows? Man. We can I'm tell a... you about it. Yeah, you got to experience <laughs> it for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you, if you go to a dog show, it's a bug that, that, that'll hit you, bro. That, you are you into dogs and you just like dogs all in general. If you come to a dog show, it don't matter who dog show it is, you're gonna find something that you're gonna like about it. I haven't been to not one dog show. I'm the type of person I look and learn. So I'm gonna come to your dog show and I'm gonna pay attention, I'm gonna enjoy myself, but I'm gonna also look and see what I gotta do to better for our next show. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. but outside of that, you really gotta be there to see it. Especially the stack off table. Yeah, for sure. Like it's it's so much emotions and and and, and, and hard driven guys that really want to show off their product. So if you know what I'm saying, it ain't it ain't for the week, I can tell you that much. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like some real battle rapper yeah. dog your dog. Oh, I was about to say you know yeah. it, it give you that type of energy. Yeah, it from you, uh, you into battle rapping, it's, it's 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 to me, it gives me that because you're gonna have somebody put their dog on the table and be like 
fuck all them other dogs. This, you know what I'm saying? But that's just the energy, that's just the passion that they have for their, their program. You know what I'm saying? But I know these guys may to tell you, but coming from me and us, we like, man, you got to be there to see it. Yeah. Now for sure, you got to, you got to be there to see it for sure. Uh, and it's like, it's it's competitive, uh, but you know it's respectful at the same time. Right. So so it's uh, it's the closest thing I can compare it to is like you said the underground rap battles. Uh, it's that's 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 it's that type of energy. It bring that type of fire uh, to the room. Yeah. We always be fair, man. Because one thing about it, you know, uh, Boo ain't biased. Anybody that know Boo said he gonna speak his mind. He's gonna, uh, he's gonna really get down. He got this thing now when he's, when he's stacking the dog off, he, he wanna try to curl the dog out. So he's gonna get down and stare the dog in his eyes. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit like that. He want, he, what did you say? The, the, the friction in the yeah, mixture. Yeah. yeah. The friction in the mixture. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, I know, I know on ours, you know what I'm saying? It, I, I can't speak for nobody else because I don't know their relationship with other breeders, you know what I'm saying? But, I, you know, I, it's, 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 it's in the air. I done heard it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I can't speak on it and say. It's you know like uh, it's like any industry with uh, with money involved. There's always going to be somebody that question it. You know, they question if sports are real. They question if boxing is, is rigged. Any industry you can question, I mean, you can question if, if, if it was fair. Sometimes you might see a, a, a pick where you're like, oh, I, I probably wouldn't have went that way. But, uh, you know. I feel that. And y'all interviewed with uh, Kendrick Perkins at the Booster Show, right? Yeah, we did. We did. For real. Yeah. How did that make y'all feel? Man, that boy was smiling. That nah, boy for sure. Was, that boy for was sure. Was hard nah, for sure. Because <laughs> the, the main thing was like Ken, Kendrick Perkins really in the dogs too. Yeah. You know, he could re, he really in the dogs, and uh, and and he was so he was so welcoming and so open and so so one hundred with it that it was just like. You know, it was definitely a good feeling because sometimes, like we said, we get that hate, and and and, and amongst when you get when you get some hate, sometimes it'll put you in like man, fuck you mode. It'll just put you in that mode, and uh, but then you see that uh, you know somebody to, of, of the of the stature of Kendrick Perkins, you know, showing us love, and and it it reminds you of what what the whole grind is for. What you know. Right. While he was cheesing, I was I was back there uh, holding the camera cheesing too, but uh, mm. you know, cause he, he knew he knew our name. You know, a lot of people mess our, our name up, cause it's kind of if you ain't familiar with it, it's a tongue twister. You know what I'm saying? But he knew the whole name, and you know, he said he been watching. So, you know, when you be having them doubts, like when your numbers ain't matching up with your grind, and you know what I'm saying, and when he say that, it kind of make you be like, yeah, we doing it, we we, we going it. <coughs> My bad. We're going in the right direction. Yeah, nah, for sure. I feel that. But yeah. Who are some of the other celebrities or rappers or entertainers that's just been involved with the dog entertainment industry as well? Uh, you got Trap Boy Freddy, Bankroll Freddy, uh, Kevin Gates, uh, Big Boosie, uh, Fred Rari, Ferrari Red, uh, Big Boy. Be a big boy. It's a, it's a lot. I see y'all had prestigious on here. We we had shared a clip on our page about ten months ago with him on here. He yeah. had a French. He had brought some Frenches up here. Yeah. Uh, I, Kendrick I don't Perkins. Know if, he, if he a rapper though, but I know he in the game some type of way. It's it, it, it's more than I can name. Yeah, Roy Jones Jr., Kendrick Perkins. Uh, it's a lot of people. Uh, lots of daylight, the battle rapper. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's a lot. It's more than I can name. Yeah. 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 See, Frenchies are now, Frenchies has just became the number one U.S. dog. Yeah. From 30 years of it being with the Golden Retriever or the Labrador. Yeah, Lab. It was one yeah, of them been the number one dog in America for the last 30 years. But this year, the first year, Frenchies have, have, have changed that. So. It's, it's, you're gonna see more Frenchies now than they say you will ever see. You know what I'm saying? Because they sure. are some of the most prestigious dogs right now. They done premiered in a, a few Super Bowl commercials. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's 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 definitely grown. It's definitely grown.
Uh, for sure. for sure. So being at this business, you got to have some money on and have some fun on. Uh-huh. You talk about being self-funded. Yeah. So, uh, man, we, uh, <laughs> it, it's, 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 you know, you got to really want to do it. You got to really want to do it. Uh, from from the dogs to, like I say, man, it's going to be, it's going to come a time to where uh, uh, uncalculated expense or uncalcul- you know, unexpected loss, something's going to happen. It's going to question, you know, whether you really want to do it. Um, as far as the podcast, you know, each and every, each and every week we continuously growing, you know, whether it's new equipment, new camera, uh, new setup, new backdrop. Uh, we don't, we don't own our studio, so, you know, our studio, we, we pay for our studio each and every week. Uh, it's, um, it's, you know, you got to really want to do it, and you got to really see, you got to really, you know, believe in what you're doing to dish out kind of the type of money that, that, that breeders dish out, and also that we dish out to, to keep the podcast going. Um, you heard him say this dog right here. This is a fifty thousand dollar dog. So, with a with a fifty thousand dollar dog, if this dog gets sick today, what you gonna do? Right. You're going to the vet immediately. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and whatever that vet tell you that that dog has, you know whatever that whatever that that cure is, you gotta pay that. It's just you know. So it's uh, you definitely gotta want to do this. No, for sure. Yeah. How does that keep y'all motivated? What's some of the ups and downs that you feel like, oh, like you said, you had some good years, but then you had some bad ones? I'm going to let you get that one, Steve. It got to be the love for the dog that keep yeah. them motivated. You know, other than that, uh, I don't see, I don't see no other reason. So it yeah. got to be uh, the love and the passion for the, for the breed. But, uh, yeah. Because people come and go. Uh, people uh, come and go every day. Uh, yeah, yeah. You might see a, like you, you see breeders, you know, you see breeders and you see different uh, podcasts come and go every day. Um, and like you say, it's just the love of the dogs, that, that, com- that commitment, you know, of uh, trying to, trying to be the best or trying to, trying to keep progressing it, it, it you gotta have a love for the dogs start with the love for the dogs for sure no, if you don't have a love for the dogs you're gonna you're gonna fold one day you're gonna fold one day <laughs> i'm telling you you're gonna fold one day because because uh you know it, it'll hit them pockets for sure no for sure but talk about being booked for shows traveling across state to state that gotta be a good feeling as well especially people respecting what y'all putting up Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a blessing, man. We actually booked for a show tomorrow. Uh, the Freak Neat. It's called the Freak Neat. Uh, it's gonna be in Gwinnett County. I know this interview gonna be out by time. It's, uh, yeah, it's in Gwinnett. Uh, by uh, DDK Dam Danley. Yeah, but yeah, man, it's a good feeling, man. Uh, like I say, we went from doing this outside of the Dacra shop every week with speakers. And only two people might be there, you know what I'm saying? So, man, it's a, it's a blessing, you know, uh, when you can make this. I'm, me personally, I want to get it to work. Everybody, this is their full-time job. And, you know, we're going, we going on business trips, you know what I'm saying? Shipping pina coladas yeah. type shit, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's my goal, man. Nah, for sure. It definitely like now that he say pina coladas, just remind me. We did a, we did we we did a show in Puerto Rico, yeah. so it's like you know it's definitely it it opened doors, and uh, you know I might I might meet somebody way way across the country, you know, just just from the dog shows or just in the dog game. So uh, it's definitely you know. It's, de- it's definitely a blessing, and it let us know we, we're going in the right direction to get, you know, booked for these shows across the across the world. No, for real. Yeah. Talk about 
the official breeders list. <laughs> you wanna talk about that? Nah, you got it. Nah. Man. So he gonna put me he gonna he gonna put me on the uh, on the on the spicy block. So uh it's a ranking system. You know, any every industry has a has a ranking system. And I won't just break it down to, you know, our method as far as how we do it, but it's a ranking system that in an industry where there wasn't a ranking system. So anytime you, you start a ranking system and you got, and, and you start about a year, you know, you're doing about a year. So you got somebody, just, ima just imagine like in, in, if, it's, if it's basketball, you got uh, LeBron, you got Jordan, Jordan might not make our list because we're talking about 2023. So when you see LeBron number one, and they're like, how you leave Jordan off the list? But, you know, it's, we do 2023. We did a year, the year that we in. So, and it has never been done in the industry before. You got, uh, you got people that, uh, you know, try to mimic it, but it's nothing like our official uh, breeders list. When it come out, it's always some type of, it's always some type of buzz, some type of drama behind it. Um, I think sometimes people think we intentionally create that drama, but nah, it's just, it's just what it is. Anytime you have a, a ranking system, it's gonna create a buzz because it, of course everybody feel like they should be number one. And then when you, when you tell this person, well, in our eyes or in the people eyes, you number seven, you know, it, 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 it hit different. Man, them comments be going crazy. You yeah. be like, why, why this person ain't on the list? And then you be like, ah, right, let me go, let me go look at they, they page, and it ain't it. You yeah. Like, Dang. So who telling this person? Yeah. Who, 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 who feeding that, that feeding that lie to him? Like, nah, for sure. Yeah. 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 They say they want it's they top five because nobody can tell you who your top five in sports. Nobody can tell you who I like. You know what yeah. I mean? But that's just what it is. It's, it's a it's a it's a conversation starter. For sure. In today's world, you know what I'm saying? You can go put a you can go put a list out there and throw everybody that's not top ten on there. Yeah. And you probably get more comments and shit on there than you will if you had the right list. But yeah. it's just a conversation starter, man. It, to me it just helps you get if you ain't on that list, do what you gotta do to get on that list. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it's their platform and what's, what's going to make their list. It's, it's no hate intended. You know what I'm saying? It's just <coughs> they list. For know? sure. It's really to show love to the people that's, that's, that's been working. You They're know? doing good being it, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's been working real hard. It's really to show love to them. And it's like, uh, it's like in this game, breeders, they real passionate about everything they do. So, you know, so take it as, take it as, it's like these dogs are like people kids. They real passionate about everything they do. So in their mind, and in, in, in most breeders' mind, they can't see the reality. You know, they think they number one. They think they got the best shit out. But when you when you take a deeper dive into it on the outside looking in, somebody may be like, you know, they 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 stuff average or it's alright, or somebody might say it's trash. But to that breeder they got the best shit in the world because that's their kid. And you can't see your kid in no other light than being the best. You know what I mean? Hey. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole point of the list was the it was all it was all it was a positive move. For sure. It was never intended to be negative. We was just trying to put put light, you know what I'm saying, on different cities. We started in uh in Arkansas. We started our first list in Arkansas. And uh, it did good. Nah, we, I lied. We did it in our city, but Dallas, when we yeah. started going out of state, we did Arkansas, and then we did New Orleans. In them cities, I knew people really wasn't paying attention to them, so I wanted to shed light on those, on those type of states and cities. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know, really don't want to deal with New Orleans. And when we we dealt with New Orleans, you know, you got what? You know, New Orleans nah, for is. sure. They yeah. was they was going crazy, like for real, for real. Like uh, you know, it it don't all come with uh, it ain't all glitz and glamour. Like like you say, like a lot of people don't want to deal with 
with places like that in New Orleans, like, and, uh, you know, but them folks in New Orleans, they really appreciate us showing, shedding the light, you know, on what they got going on, because they, they putting their work down there, but for whatever reason, in this community, New Orleans wasn't looked at as like a dog, you know, a dog uh, city. Yeah. So, but, you know, when you talk to them folks from New Orleans now, they really appreciate, you know, what we did, you know, what we do for them and the love we show them. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. For sure. Any last words and shout outs? Man, shout out, uh, real tune, man. We got a product, you know what I'm saying? We, we joint ventured on, uh, we got some merch producing our bought, you know what I'm saying? You can hit us up on the page. Yeah, you can hit us For up sure. on the page if you want one. You know, if you're a producer, and you ain't buy your buy your stuff. You know, it fits you. Mm-hmm. If you For bought sure. it, that's cool too. You can still but, wear it. You yeah. might have produced something else. Just, just switch yeah. it around. About not produce, guy. <laughs> uh, man, I got a shout out. Uh, other two members back at home, uh, Low Key, Tony. Shout out to y'all. Uh, man. Shout out Roll Running uh, yeah, for sure. Clyde for pulling up. Shout out Roll Running and Clyde for sure, for sure. For sure Can't man. forget them. Uh, shout out, shoot, shout out to everybody, man. We just we want to continue pushing the envelope and, and and make this podcast, you know, bigger, bigger and better. Yeah, shout out High and Fluffy too. For sure, for sure. Uh, King Gox, the homie. Yeah, shout out them boys. Man. Shout out. Mama, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> The Bully Spitting Podcast, man. We appreciate y'all having y'all on the porch with us, man. For um, sure, for sure. It. Appreciate you. For sure. I'm getting money. I'm getting money. Nah, for real. 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 I keep it on me.